it's still around guys. It's, it's still a trend. I think it will be a trend for a while. And if you watched my original video where I touched on like a couple of different things that was kind of going around the YouTube luxury space, one of them being quiet luxury, I sort of mentioned that I don't really think it's a trend. It's always been there. It's always been a thing. So regardless of it being on TikTok, it's always been there. So let's talk about five brands, quite a few of them who I have put some pieces on my 2023 wish list, as well as some brands that were newer to me that no one is really talking about. The first one is Moina. Now, some of you may know Moinat, and I actually have had the pleasure of trying on some items from Moina. There actually is a boutique, sort of a counter type boutique within Saks for Moina. And interestingly enough, the sales associate when I was there last time, and I'll pop up some footage here that you will have seen recently in my recent shopping vlog, he, the sales associate told me that they are actually opening a freestanding store, I believe in Soho. And I think he said maybe it's supposed to open like within the next six months or so. I did confirm, however, they are not closing the Saks location, which I am very happy for because as you all know, I really like to get my points when I shop. So if I can do it through a department store, that's always my preference. So let's talk about Moina and its history. It was started in 1849 by Octavia and Francois Colombier. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but we'll go with it. Excuse the horrible French accent. I, I realized that that was probably cringe to any of you that actually speak French. Anyway, they started out as Parisian trunk makers. And then in about 1854, they actually developed the first waterproof canvas. Then in 1869, they opened a maison on 1 Avenue de l'Opera. Then in 1902, they created the limousine trunk. And I'll pop, be popping some pictures up here so you can see. For cars that had concave roofs so that when you set the trunk on top of the roof of a car, it actually fit right on top of it, right? It wasn't like the car was like this and the trunk was flat but it actually had a concave bottom. And you'll see that still in some of their designs. In 1903 is when they first created the Régent bag, which was inspired by Gabrielle Régent, who was actually a French actress and was friends with Pauline Moynat. Then in 1920, they introduced their initial or their basically their monogram print canvas. Then in 2010, LVMH actually purchased Moina, and in 2022, Nicholas Knightley was hired as their creative director. Now it's interesting about Moina, or at least from what I could find both on their website and information as I was kind of researching them, is that they only make approximately 30 bags per week. And each bag takes, similar to Hermes, three to seven days to make by a single artisan, just like Hermes. Now, there are sort of three main bags that Moina is known for. The first is the Gabrielle. That's probably their most popular style. And again, I'll show a picture here of when I tried it on its sex. It's a really, it's a great top handle bag. You know, a lot of these you'll see that have this sort of similar top handle with a strap bag, very similar to the Hermes Kelly. They all kind of have that sort of similar vibe. So the Gabrielle comes in three sizes, plus they also have the Gabrielle Clutch, which is very reminiscent of the Kelly Pochette. I tried that on as well. Much better price though, I will say. And the Gabrielles range from $2,800 to about $4,900. And the clutch that I mentioned runs $4,500. Then of course they have the aforementioned Régent bag, which interestingly they have the Gabrielle and the Régent and the actress's name was Gabrielle Régent, but they only really talk about the Régent bag being the one that was inspired by the actress, but yet their other sort of infamous bag and probably the most well-known bag in their collection, at least now, is her first name. But anyway, nobody talks about that. I didn't see anything about that, but I just, as I was making my notes, I was like, wait a minute, 
that's her first name. That's really interesting. Anyway, those come in three sizes and yeah, it's a little bit of a different shape. It's still the top handle, but it's a lot more rounded. And those range from $2,800 to $7,850. And the final bag from Moynant that is fairly noteworthy, and you'll see this across, again, many of these brands, is called the O Tote very reminiscent of the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. And like I said, you will see that several of these brands that we're gonna talk about have that similar vibe. They all have a tote that is very, very similar to the Neverfull. They come in three sizes, just like the Neverfull, the PM, the MM, and the GM, but better priced at $1,290 to $1,630. So I think it's a great alternative to a Neverfull. I have tried it on in the past. I don't know that I have any pictures. If I do, I will certainly throw them up here. But if you are looking for a Neverfull alternative, this might be one you consider. Our next brand is Delvo, and this is one that I am very, very interested in. So this brand is based in Brussels, so it's not a French brand, but you know, it's close, they're, they're neighbors. But this was started in 1829 by Charles Delvo. And interestingly, in 1908, they filed the first patent for the women's handbag. In 1933, Franz Schwenicki, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, took over the brand. And after that, they were actually the first brand to come out with seasonal collections. In 1958, they created the Briand bag, which is again, one of their infamous bags or one of their more popular bags that we'll talk about in a minute. And that was actually created for the Brussels World Fair. One of the most fascinating things that I found out about Delvo as I was doing research on them is that they have over 3,000 different handbags designs that are all cataloged and sketched in this book, which is called the Golden Book or the Livre d'Or. Am I again saying that correctly? Book of Gold or Golden Book. And I just think that's incredible. Can you imagine having over 3,000 sketches of potential handbags? Yet if you look on their website, they really only have probably five main bags that they produce. I think they have a couple of ones that might be sort of seasonal that they do on occasion. But as we get into sort of their main bags, you'll see, I mean, there, I think I said, like I said, there's about five or six, we're gonna talk about three. And the first is that Briand bag that I mentioned before that was developed for the World's Fair. It is a trapezoid top handle shaped bag with a shoulder strap. Again, very reminiscent of the Kelly. And the buckle is a sort of horseshoe shaped, but when you look at it, it forms a D. And that is something that is consistent throughout a lot of their bags that they have something in the buckle that represents the brand. The Briant takes 64 pieces of leather and metal pieces to make and it takes more than eight hours to be constructed. Comes in five sizes and range anywhere from about $6,000 to $10,000, depending on the size and the leather. The next bag is the Tempet, I think is maybe how you say that bag. Also kind of a trapezoid top handle bag. This one I think invokes a lot of what a Kelly has because it has those singles on the side. Now, you don't actually use those singles to open and close the bag. It just it lifts up. There's a, a magnetic mechanism that holds the flap down, but you can cinch and loosen those singles. And they're characteristic or they're characterized by the sort of studded metal that they have holding the singles. Those come in four sizes, including again, a pochette version, and they range anywhere from $4,200 to $6,500. The last bag I'm gonna talk about from Delvo, which is the one that I am most interested in, is called the Lingo, I think is how you pronounce it. L-I-N-G-O-T, but I think, I think the T is silent. And it, this bag is very, very similar to the Hermes Constance, which is sort of one of the reasons why I'm interested in it. First of all, it's a much better price. Second of all, there are some things about it that I really like. For example, it has an adjustable strap, which the Hermes Constance does not. I love the 
buckle on it, which is an elongated D. I think, again, I mean, no one would ever know what this bag is. And unless you are really, really into luxury bags, you're, no one is going to know that this is a luxury handbag, even though it has a D on it as a part of the clasp. This comes in two sizes. They just most recently added the small size. And they run, again, depending on the leather and the size, between $3,900 and $5,000. They do have a boutique here in New York on the corner of 59th and 5th. Unfortunately, it has been covered by scaffolding because of renovations they're doing to the outside of the building for quite a while. So unfortunately, outside doesn't look very pretty, but once you step inside the boutique, it is just beautiful on the inside. Another thing that I like about Delbo is you can also buy it through Nordstrom. So two of their stores in California actually have a Del Delvo, you know, boutique, or again, it's, I have to guess it's probably more of like a counter kind of thing, but they do sell them through Nordstrom. So once again, I can get my points. Our next brand has a very interesting heritage, and that is Ferre Lepage, which was started in 1716 as a firearms manufacturer, which is, it's very interesting to think that a firearms manufacturer would somehow end up in leather making, but they have. And it was started by Louis Pigny and remained as a family owned brand until 1913. What's also interesting I find about the brand, especially when you hear its heritage about gun making and things, is that the guns that they made, the firearms, were not to be used in war. They weren't meant for like actual shooting. They were ceremonial guns. In 2012, Agustin de Buffevel, not sure if I'm saying that correctly, bought the company and has been kind of reinventing the house while still respecting the heritage of the brand. Their fish scale sort of monogram print is iconic to the house. Once again, they have something very similar to the Neverfull, and that is the Daily Battle Tote. Now this tote actually comes both just as an open tote, like the Neverfull, or you can actually get it with a zipper. It comes in three sizes, I believe, and ranges anywhere from 1,200 euro to 1,500 euro. So again, better priced than the Neverfull, so would make a great option if that's something you're looking for. So the last two brands that we're going to talk about are actually very new to me. The first I discovered through watching some YouTube videos and the second brand actually I discovered through Instagram. So the first brand is Moreau Pelli, I think is how you pronounce it. And I love what they sort of, how they describe their bags, which is combining a happy contemporary luxury with French Parisian elegance. So this brand was started in 1799 by Louis Moreau Sr. And the company at that time was focused on making chests. So not trunks, but chests. And then in 1805, they started producing trunks for Napoleon. So they have a very rich heritage with European and French royalty. Then in 1882, they opened their first store on Faubourg Saint Honoré, which as some of you may know, is where the Hermes sort of flagship store is. They call it the FSH store for Faubourg Saint Honoré. And then they started their foray into bags. So the first bag we're gonna talk about from Moreau is their Saint-Tropez bag. And this, again, is their Neverfull alternative, and it is really well priced. So again, if you are in the market for a Neverfull type tote, highly recommend this one. This one, I believe, does come also in three sizes, again, just like the Neverfull, but it is priced from 750 euro to 900 euro, which is, I'm guessing, about half price from what the Neverfull is currently priced in, in euros. And the second bag I wanna talk about from Moreau is called the Mune, I think that's how you pronounce it, M-U-N-E bag. Again, similar to the Hermes Kelly in that is a trapezoid shaped bag with a top handle and a strap. 
It comes in two sizes, both a BB and an MM, and that ranges from 1,390 euro to 2,000 euro. One of the most interesting things I found when I was researching the Moro brand, when I was, and especially when I was on their website, is they have a new program that they started in January called the One of a Kind program. And it's basically where each month, one of their in-house artisans comes up with a new design that they put on the bag. So it's like, almost like a painting. And it's a bespoke item and it's on a different type bag each time. So it's not always on the Saint-Tropez, for example, it's on some of their different handbags as well. And it appears from basically what I've seen is that every month since they've started the program, the bags have sold out. So obviously it's been very popular and it's kind of a nice way to set yourself apart from other Moreau lovers, even though, again, very much a quiet luxury brand. And the last brand, is Joseph Duclos. And this is the brand actually that I saw on Instagram. So I'm sure you guys have seen as you're you know, scrolling on stories, you'll get ads that pop up in your stories. And I've seen Joseph Duclos several times in my stories. And I remembered it as I was preparing for this video because they have this very iconic sort of sword shaped clasp that we'll talk about in a minute. Joseph Duclos was actually started in 1754 and it was done with the backing of French businessman Frank Dahan. First foray was providing French royalty with the first leather goods. Now the house is headed by Ramesh Nair who is formerly of Moyna and Hermes, interestingly enough, so a very strong heritage there now for the brand. And their signature bag is the Diane bag. Again, somewhat similar to the Kelly. It's more of a trapezoid shaped bag with the top handle and a strap. It comes in two different sizes and it is known for arrow shaped clasp, which is homage to Diane, who is the goddess of hunting. So as I mentioned, they have the two sizes of the top panel version, but they also have a messenger style of this bag, which I think is also really good looking. So more of your crossbody bag. So the top handle bags range from about $4,900 to $6,400. They're in really weird numbers, I think because they're being converted from euros, if I had to guess. So like the top number was like $6,443. So I'm just rounding here, folks. And then the messenger style ranges from about $4,400 to about $5,000. And I think what the one of the most interesting things about the Diane bag, in addition to that sort of arrow shaped clasp, is that if you look on the bottom and sides of the bag, there's this wide metal band that goes all around the bottom. And you'll obviously be seeing this in pictures. And it has an engraved uh, line from something called Letters Patent of 1754. Not sure what that is. But if you don't want that, you can actually personalize it. So their hope is that you have your bags for a lifetime. And so they welcome you to customize, like I said, the engraving on that part of the bag and put whatever phrase or, you know, whatever would be meaningful to you. So those are the five quiet luxury brands that really not many people are talking about, but that I think have some really great and beautiful bags to be considered, especially if you are someone who likes more of an understated type look. And you know, regardless of whether it's trending on TikTok or not, if you are somebody, like I said, who really enjoys more of a quiet luxury aesthetic, you like, you know, not having a lot of brands, these particular brands would be perfect for you because most of them have absolutely no branding. And even where they do, for example, on their sort of monogram canvas that they're known for, it is very, very difficult to discern their names. I mean, you would really have to look very closely. You'd, you'd really have to know the brand and know it well to know 
any of these particular bags. So like I said, if you are looking for some new bags or new brands to explore, I would highly recommend that you check some of these out. I'll try to link some of these bags below so you can kind of see them. I have seen both Delvo and Moina bags on Fashion Files, so you might take a look there. I would definitely say that these brands don't hold their resale value. I think probably because they're not as well known, but from everything I've read and seen on the internet and reviews, all of these brands have, you know, master craftsmen who put these bags together and they are just as beautifully made as some of the very, very expensive French houses. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed learning some history and some background about some of these not so talked about brands. If you did, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments below. Have you heard of any of these brands? Are any of these brands on your wish lists? Have you seen any of them in person? I would love to know because there are several brands on here that I've never seen in person. So if any of you have seen any of those brands and have handled them and seen them in person or own one, that would be amazing. Please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would love it if you would join us here. Click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. And if you haven't had enough of me yet, I will pop another video up here for you to watch. And wherever you are, I hope you are having an amazing day or evening, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.